Cookie Clicker, boom, Mr. Mime, boom, Antimatter Dimensions. Now what you may be saying is, what do all these have in common? Or, ow, my arm really hurts, why are you grabbing it so hard? Please let go of my arm. Well, to the answer to your first question, they're actually captivating story games with insane movement mechanics that, just kidding, I'm, I'm fucking joking, you click. They're games that you click, okay? You click in the games and upgrade every once in a while, but you mostly click and click and click. I'm gonna just go ahead and get this out of the way. Very new setup for me. I never have made a video like this before, but I wanted to go over a couple of clicker games that I've played throughout the years because I have really put some hours uh, into clicker games. Happy holidays to anybody. I really hope to have this out before Christmas, but uh, seeing my past scheduling issues, We'll uh we'll see how that goes. Um, we'll we'll just have to see how that goes. I'm sure everybody has played a clicker game at this point. Clicker games or incremental or tap games are games that require the player to focus mainly on simple actions to increase an in-game currency that can be used to buy upgrades to increase your currency faster. And I know that sounds like a snooze fest, but let me tell you. There is any type of incremental game that you can find or an idle game that you can find to scratch that little micro niche that you might be itching. That's why we got things like Grandma's Cookie Clicker. We got Mr. Mon. We got Incremental Cubes, The Perfect Tower 2, and the list goes on and on and on. In an article written by IVC author on Invisible Culture, the game critic Jeff Gerstman? Huh? Gerstman? Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. It says, these are games where you click on things to watch numbers go up, and eventually in many of these games, you're able to hire things that effectively click for you. You are then earning more currency to spend on more hirelings that click on more things for you, so the numbers go up faster. It's the exponential machine that never necessarily gets easier or harder. The numbers just keep going up. And I think that is a great way to put it. That's mainly where all the satisfaction from these games come from. Being able to see an upgrade that you have waited about two hours to be able to get all the resources for and use that upgrade and see your numbers go up almost, you know, twice as fast, four times as fast, 16 times as fast. It is a very satisfying gameplay loop that you end up encountering so let's just go ahead and jump into some of the games that i've played throughout the years uh so first game we're going to talk about is mr mine i have actually spent about 50 hours game time total in this game what i was mainly going towards was in the top left corner as you can see there's three tabs that says earth and then question mark question mark i was striving striving to get to the second layer because i assumed it would be like a moon colony or something but even after 50 hours of gameplay probably about 10 or 20 hours of it being actually idle not working on it actively i still never got past anything so um now that i'm actually thinking about it i should probably look up and see what the other levels are Hey, I uh, just wanted to check in on this. I couldn't really find any information on what the other levels are, but my man Rune Snow is uh, 2200 hours into Mr. Mine currently, and it is a moon level, and it has moon ores and a reactor that I haven't done. I don't know what these two things are, but um, I don't really have 2200 hours to lay down towards Mr. Mine for finding this out, but uh, yeah, thought that was pretty interesting. I'll let you know. Check out Rune Snow on YouTube if you'd like to. Going into it, this is Mr. Mine. This is a very simple one, but I love the animations. And, and as you'll see, that's another big part of clicker games that uh, is a big draw for people is the animations and just seeing what happens on screen as you click certain things. So as you see, you have a drill that's constantly mining down to get more depths in your mine. And once you hire your first worker, every row is gonna have like one through 10 of miners. Uh, and when you buy more workers, it ends up filling the row. If you hire the first worker, you're always gonna get workers on 
the left side of the row. If you buy two workers, you're gonna get two lines of workers. That's pretty much what I was trying to say. This is more of an actual idle, idle game. There is a lot that you can do actively to push along and help, but most of what's gonna be happening in this game is actually just upgrading, clicking on little things. And later on, as you'll see, there are cave systems, there's a trading post where you can you can change out certain materials in exchange for other materials that might net you a little bit more cash. You can send scientists on expeditions to possibly come back with either a relic or uh, building materials or different type of resources. That's pretty much the main gameplay loop. Later on you'll see that there's a forge where you Use your resources to make gemstones, to upgrade weapons, to fight bosses. There's a lot of different aspects to this one, uh, but there really isn't too much going on. There are achievements. Later on in other depths, you'll be able to unlock the core and sacrifice certain either resources, relics, or, or scientists into it to hopefully get out a better upgraded version of whatever you threw in. Or Like, you can... I get so exacerbated talking about things. I get so damn excited when I get behind a f***ing camera. The main beginning loop, as you see, is me uh, clicking on these deposits that net me more coal in the beginning and then copper once we find it. And like I said, that's kind of the clicking part of this game. In the beginning, you will have to do that a lot to be able to get the resources necessary to start buying actual upgrades. Um, but you upgrade things like your drill, you can upgrade uh, storage capacity. That's what the main upgrades out of the craft center are, is drill and storage capacity. In the higher center, you can actually upgrade your workers to net you more profit. But that comes a little bit later because those are very expensive. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this game. You fight monsters that attack your miners. That's where you need to use your weapons. And that's why you need to upgrade your weapons and yada, yada, yada. I don't know, it just really did it for me. It really did it for me. As you can see later on, uh, you get crazy miners who are shooting the rocks with lasers and shit. Um, there's chests that are constantly coming up in later games just because of how many floors you have, how many workers you have actually working on it. There's a lot that ends up happening and there's a lot to manage. There's multiple little aspects that you click a few things, get it going, and that's it. Like the cave systems especially, you send a drone out, it does what it needs to do, and that, the drones itself, they can take up from either two minutes to like 10 minutes. I'm not sure if that's exactly the amount that it can go up to, but there are drones that do last a very long time and you kind of have to play into knowing when the cave is actually going to collapse. Um, so you're not like sending out drones that it's not going to come back anyway. It's just a good thing to do uh, actively to make you feel like you're actually reaching goals. And now that I actually say that, that's probably a big part of idle games is that you're constantly striving for that next big goal and uh, once you hit it, it is very satisfying, at least to me. There is a lot of people who don't really understand that aspect of like what comes out of a clicker game. Yeah, that's pretty much it. We have at least where I am in the game. And like I said, I'm about 50 hours in, and this is all I know, really. That's about it for Mr. Mine. I really do enjoy this game. Next up on our list, we actually have a more active one, in my opinion. This has a lot of moving parts. I'm not going to explain everything fully, just because we would be here for a while, in all honesty. Pacifish is a game revolving mainly around catching fish, uh, hatching them, and fighting things. I would say that's like the main aspects of the game, but like I said, there are so many tiny moving parts in this. It does seem like it can be more, a, a much more active idle game. Just on this front screen alone, there's a lot going on. Uh, in the top corner, or like the top bar, you can actually see me moving the fish around to get coins and what were they called? Pixels? I think they were called pixels. The purple things, they're used to upgrade your DPS and things in the fighting section, which you'll see later on. Damn, where is it? There we go. Yeah, we do have notes, <laughs> and it's so bad because I'm not going to sound like I have notes because I'm trying to do it a little bit more off the cuff. I don't want to sit here and be like, passive fish tokens are used to bet on fish lots, tokens for coins if needed. What the f am I? 
What did I write down? But anyway, there are a lot of parts to this one. So in the main area, like I said, there's the top bar, which is a little mini fishing game that you use arrow keys to hit other fish, I guess to eat. Um, and there's a whole section down in the bottom right where it shows your HP and uh, the EXP that you're getting from that mini game. And that upgrades the gold that you get and everything from that. In the bottom, you can see there's different lures and different rods. They offer you different amounts of catches pretty much you can either have higher uh, material catches or you can have double fish catches stuff like that or you can change to the bait hook and actually use bait um, I believe the bait just causes you to fish faster you can actually see the exp and everything that you're getting in the bottom left corner with your uh, fisher level the fisher level is used to unlock new areas to fish in so that's kind of like the main area in the front this is a lottery section pretty much you bet tokens which are the stars the more tokens that you bet the higher your output will be but you can either win uh more tokens more pixels more gold random fish or xp or fragments you use fragments as you can see in the right side you use fragments to combine into parts to upgrade the slots so this is like a whole nother idle section in all honesty when you think about it. Um, but you do use this to upgrade your actual slots to get better things. It's just something you leave on in the background and come check back later. There's a hatchery where you can put fish into tanks and after a while they're gradually breed and everything and you can collect from those tanks to increase your inventory. There's a workshop where you can use a forge again to uh, use your materials to make better lures, better rods, everything like that. And the actual fighting section, which, which like I said, you use the pixels to upgrade your DPS against certain bosses, and all of this can be used in tandem to keep your ass busy. It's going to keep you f***ing busy, I'll tell you that much right now. Pacifish was a game that was very hands-on because there's always, there's so many sections of everything going on that you constantly are having something that you can update. I really, and, and don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed Pacifish. Like, it's a very, it's a very good game. It has anime, it has very good animations. I like the sprite art of everything. But like I said, it is very hands-on. There's also the depths, which is just like achievements and everything. Um, but yeah, that's about it for Pacifish. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty good game in my opinion. It's a pretty good game. You should check it out. Idle Wizard. Um, this one was actually funny because in the beginning of my recording, you, you can see that offline production was a minute 32 seconds. Um, when I actually clicked on this game, I wish I was recording. I thought I was. I don't know what happened, but um, it said offline production 240 days. <laughs> that's the last time that I actually played this game. Uh, the reason why is that this is a game where not much happens, there's not much actual interactions that you can do with the game, but the numbers are absolutely insane. It may appear that I've been in this game for a while with uh, all the numbers that are flashing by on the screen, but this honestly uh, is not the case. I have about 7 hours in this game, which still, it sounds like a lot, but for these type of games it's really not. This one is very prestige heavy where uh, you actually the main gameplay loop comes from getting to a certain point very quickly until you kind of plateau and then you choose to prestige. As you can see in Idol Wizard on the right side that's the actual production items and then their upgrades is in the left so this exile this exile tab it grants you mysteries, which each mystery increases profits by 3%. So that's pretty much the prestiging side of this game. Um, in my own personal opinion, I do not enjoy prestige focused uh, idle games as much as I do others. Prestige heavy idle games focus on a very bare um, gameplay loop of getting up to a certain plateau and then prestiging to start everything back over and doing the exact th same thing to get to where you were just to prestige again as soon as you plateau. That's not a gameplay loop that I really enjoy because it, it seems like I'm not really working towards anything. I, I know that I'm going to end up prestiging within the next like 10 minutes. Can't really 
suggest one of these type of idle games these kind of get very boring very quickly and i think this type of idle game is what a lot of people assume most idle games are like um which isn't the case hi diva you know i'm just not feeling this one there is parts to idle wizard that are pretty good like you pick a specific class uh i don't really remember which one i was for this i think it's like necromorph or something or is that dead space what 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 am i on you pick a certain class and you can also choose a pet to help you with your production they have different abilities that can work in tandem with your character to really boost profits or you can choose something that doesn't really work together and see how well you can meld like a spell focus pet with a profit focus class and that kind of thing but it's not super in depth um and so I can't say that I really suggest it. Um, there's not even really much to explain about. There's a, It looks like there's a lot of buttons, but maybe I just didn't give this one enough of a try. And I can definitely say that that's my fault if that's the case. But Idle Wizard is not that fun to me. And last but not least, we're going to get into Incremental Cubes. This is another more prestige focused uh, idle game, but there are parts to it that made it a little bit more fun for me. The main aspect as you can see in the top is you're constantly fighting a boss of some kind. I've actually gotten to the point where I have a helper who is attacking the boss for me but as you can see as soon as I go to the next it's barely ticking anything. It's not it's not very big. I have two helpers, a samurai helper, magician helper. I know the samurai helper attacks, attacks the boss for you. The magician helper I think uh, puts cubes into your inventory pretty much but yeah incremental cubes is another prestige focus one but as you can see there's an entire net of prestige abilities that you can buy so you can focus more on a certain aspect like if you want to do more damage you can uh, focus most of your points into most of your prestige points into those type of areas but at the end of the day you're going to end up getting all of them so it doesn't really matter and i think that's what made me um step away from this game when i did i have about 15 hours in this one i believe i really enjoyed seeing the cubes be filled it is very satisfying to see the cubes be filled yeah there are challenges there's an inventory where you can see i have the beginner sword equipped and that just raises my attack power by 22.50 or whatever it was pretty much you buy uh, tick speeds pretty much you upgrade tick speeds of white blue green it goes later it goes like orange red gold all the colors when that tick hits it fills into the box and you can either choose to collect or you can choose to attack the boss with it and that's really about it for this one as well uh, this one is another kind of slower one a more prestige focused one than anything but it still is a good one at the end of the day if you enjoy seeing squares being filled. It did it for me for about 15 hours, clearly. So um, I can't really dunk on it too hard. But yeah, that's um, that's a look into a few idle games. Uh, I know that I mentioned Cookie Clicker. Cookie Clicker is a very good game. But I, if I remember correctly, that's one of the first idle games that I ever played. That's probably one of the first idle games that most people have played. I do remember it being very pretty, not very involved, pretty involved, because it's mainly just the buying of units and then the upgrading of units. And I think there was a prestige option, but I was so attached to my grandma army back when I was 11 years old, out in the battlefield, in the trenches, with my cookie batter in hand. I was way too attached to be able to prestige, but I do remember there being like alien grandmas, uh, nuclear powered cookie facilities and stuff like that, and, and I do have to say that is a very good one. But that one kind of falls into the same spectrum as some of the others where there's really not much to do i know there's not a lot of other mini games and stuff to do behind and i know that there's a lot more out there that i probably have never played um i know there's like leaf blower revolution or evolution or something like that farmers against potatoes like i said the perfect tower earlier in the video these are all other idle games that could be covered as well but i think that's about all that i have time for tonight and uh, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed taking a look back at some clicker games with me. Like I said, this is clicker games have been a part of my life for a good while, and I do enjoy them, um, especially when I have stuff playing in the background and everything. And I'm sure if you have clicked on this video, I'm sure that you also agree with that sentiment. Anyway, if you'd like to take a look at some of the other content I have on my channel, 
Uh, I've been trying to stream recently on Twitch, but I have been having strange internet issues here and there that's been causing me to either drop stream or lag out of my game. So I haven't really been focused on streaming a lot recently. I've kind of taken a step back from everything for a while, but as the new year rolls in, I want to try and focus on everything again. And I know this happens almost every year, but that mindset just needs to turn into that grind set as the gen alpha says i most likely believe but anyway like i said if you enjoyed it uh take a look at my other content uh i have my discord link down below um and yeah we're going to be starting a new era of geyser pop hopefully i want to do more videos like this of actually sitting down talking about something that i enjoy um, I know this one seems a bit rushed, and it is, and I apologize, but if you've sat through all of it, uh, could you please leave a like and a comment and let me know what are some idle games that you have enjoyed playing over the years, if idle games is the type of games that you like to play while you're doing something else, either watching something or crocheting or reading a book even, um, just let me know, and uh, if there's any that you want me to cover in another video, just let me know. I appreciate you taking the time to watch me, so thank you so much, bye-bye.